Hi, I'm Ronnie Mervis with Mervis Diamond Importers and I'm back to talk to you about the next C, which is color. Color is very important. Uh, let me first tell you what I'm not going to talk about when we talk about color. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the exotic colors. There are many exotic colors which have become very popular. People talk about pink diamonds, purple diamonds, black diamonds, blue diamonds, red diamonds. That isn't what falls into the general conversation about color. What we're talking about here in terms of color is color on a scale from zero color to very slight yellow. Most diamonds are in the slight yellow range. The best ones exhibit none of that at all. The ideal, what we're looking for mostly, is a colorless diamond, a diamond that shows no color at all, one that faces up absolutely like water or like ice. That is what we call a colorless diamond. And as we tend to go into color, the diamond draws more and more yellow, very slight yellow, until at the opposite end of the scale, on a white to yellow scale, you get a little bit of yellowness showing in, and the stronger it gets, the more obvious it gets, and then we talk about a yellow diamond. If it becomes deeply yellow, then it has a value as well as a fancy, intense, deep yellow. But for the middle range of diamonds, for most of the diamonds which are sold, most of the engagement ring diamonds, uh, they go from no color to a little bit of body color, but not so much that you can see it. The differences are microscopic. Now, we have a two um, charts here. We have firstly a Mervis diamond chart. And if the camera closes in, you'll see color grading scale, and it's graded from D through to Z, and then into yellow. The best diamonds are diamonds which have no color at all, and they're given a letter of the alphabet. The GIA, which is the Gemological Institute of America, is the standard for grading of diamonds in the United States. They're not the only major lab, there are a couple of other very important ones, but the GIA set up the color grading scale and it starts at D. D, E, and F show no color at all and it's what we call colorless. Each one has a little bit less color than the next, but they're all essentially colorless. At the color F, the scale turns ever so slightly, but nothing that you will see, and we will go into the next four colors, which are G, H, I, and J. Those are termed near colorless. In a laboratory setting, against master stones, with a master grader, looking at them under the most perfect of conditions, he or she will see that each one is getting progressively more yellow than the last one. But to the average eye, nobody will see whether an H or an I has got any color or not. At J, we go into faint yellow. Just as we turn the corner into K, one begins to see a slight little bit of color, just the slightest hint. And again, even though I'm saying yellow, that is a hint of yellow, and it's only if you compare a J color diamond or a K color diamond against, say, a D, and a strict comparison, what might, one might begin to see the first hint of color. But on the ring, in the ring, and on the finger, you won't see it. Um, so K, L, and M is faint yellow, and then from N onwards, the yellow becomes more and more obvious, going all the way down to Z, where it starts becoming quite apparent. Um, and here, you get into the yellow range. The bulk of the diamond engagement rings which we sell, and which most other people sell, are in this very tight group. We like to tell clients, if you really want to go over the top and get the best, go colorless. Uh, if you want good value and not spend that kind of money, if you're somewhere square in the near colorless range, G to J, you're doing just fine. And if you want to drop it a little and go into the faint yellow, that's also good. On this pyramid, you see it slightly differently. At the top, D, cross here, E, F, G, H, I, J, etc. And at the bottom, you've got the yellowy ones, which might appear easy for you to see on the uh, pyramid, down to Z. The point is, on the bottom row, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stones. Five over there, four, three, two, one. Making the point, the lower in color, the more there are, the more plentifully they occur, the less you will pay. At the top, it's the exact opposite. They are very rare. So when you pay more for a D than you pay for, in this case, uh, something in the lower rung, T, you're paying more because it's more rare. It is not normally better, it just occurs more frequently. If the average ratio of tons of rock mined to carats of diamonds produced is about 20 tons of rock to one carat, and for that you'll get an average stone out, 
If you then say, well, I don't want an average stone, I want one much higher than the average, then how many more tons of rock does one have to mine? The 20 tons might go to 40 tons or 50 tons or even more than that. There is a huge cost of mining, tremendous cost of exploration, and that's why one pays more for rarity. So rarity is a big part of it. There are two factors. Rarity affects the value and, of course, the color. Again, the most desirable being the least color, being a D, an E, or an F, but for the, by the same token, they cost more. It's easy to see the differences between the highest and the medium or the lowest if you have them in strict comparison right up against each other as we have here on this diamond pad. But when there's one only and it's on the finger, you don't see it that easily. So there is the word on color. And as for the others, like I said, the exotics, the reds, the purples, forget them. You're not going to come against them, occur across them, and if you do, they are so rare and they're going to be priced so out of reach that it's a museum item for you to ogle at but not to acquire. Thank you very much. This is me, Ronnie Mervis from Mervis Diamond Importers, ending off on the color discussion, but inviting you to stay with us. Don't go away because in the next clip we're going to talk about the fourth C, which is carat weight, and that relates to size. See you later. Thank you very much.